Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Manager Certification. We are in chapter 2 talking about the test management and as a part of it we are continuing ahead with 2.3 risk-based testing and other approaches for test prioritization and effort allocation. Now we recently completed with the risk-based testing and moving into the next segment 2.3.3 other techniques for the test selection. As a part of this section, what we are trying to understand that what are the other techniques and options, approaches, methodologies, which generally helps you to identify the test selection and determine that what kind of test cases must be executed or how you can basically write some efficient test cases to apply that to add more quality or coverage to the requirements and risk and so on. Now, of course, so many test managers employ risk-based testing as one of the elements to their test strategy because that adds really a lot of value that you're covering all your risk areas throughout your testing process and making sure that they are mitigated but many also include other techniques as well for example the number one we are talking about is the risk-based testing uh, that's the requirements based testing of course deriving test cases from requirements is a very common approach not only the risk-based uh, techniques will be used to derive the test cases, but sometimes, you know, directly you know, working with the requirement-based uh, techniques to derive. And you do have a lot of techniques like uh, equivalence partition, boundary value analysis, street transition, decision table testing, and all to definitely derive your test cases. So one of the most prominent alternative technique for developing and prioritizing test condition is requirement-based techniques. Of course, requirement-based testing may utilize several techniques and of course that does not just limit themselves to the dynamic testing techniques. We do have uh, ambiguity reviews, uh, test condition analysis, cause effect graphing and all these options. Where ambiguity reviews identify and eliminate ambiguities in the requirement which makes it more refined. You know, generally when you talk about Agile, you say that uh, requirement refinement and making sure that everything is, uh, you know, free from all the kind of issues like be it an ambiguity inconsistent inconsistencies uh, contradictions or omissions you know all sort of these issues can be refined here and only the right set of requirement with all the information what you may need at any point of time will be there with you now of course this test conditions uh, analysis involves a close reading of the requirement specification to identify the test conditions to cover now if those requirements have an assigned priority, this can be used to allocate effort and prioritize the test cases as well. Now, when you are writing down your requirements, you do determine a priority for that. Most of the organization, most of the tools which you make use of for the requirement management has a column called as priority for the requirements. When you determine that priority right at the requirement level, of course, it implies back to your test cases or the test conditions which you derive from there. And that have definitely be further being prioritized according to the requirement prioritization. So one or the other way, this generally helps you to determine the prioritization of the test cases and of course, allocate effort, the number of executions, number of test cases required to cover that requirement. Now, cause effect graphing is another approach which you have covered in the test analyst uh, certification uh, in, in case you have covered that certification before. So if in case you want quickly to know you have a card on the top, you can go ahead and visit the cause effect graphing uh, technique quickly to understand that how it works. Now, uh, in the context of covering combinations of test conditions as a part of the test analysis, cause effect graphing is very useful. However, it has a broader usage in that it can reduce an extremely large testing problems to a manageable number of test cases and still provide 100% functional coverage of the test basis. A general obstacle to requirement-based testing is that often the requirement specifications are ambiguous, untestable, incomplete, or non-existent. Not all the organizations are motivated to solve these problems, so testers confronted with such situations must select another test strategy. Now, of course, you know, there are, there are problems with the requirement generally when you write them down and when you have, you know, communication between two different organizations, like one is your customer and on the other side, you have a, a development organization and the way you communicate your, uh, you know, 
problems to them they might think that this is not the right way to understand the requirement or probably the the way customer responds to your no gives you the requirement uh, probably you do not really have all the information which you might need in order to process so you need to coordinate but doing that could take a lot of time or probably you do not get a good response from the customer every point of time or knocking the door every single moment uh, will piss off the customer and the customer might say that uh, okay i think you're not understanding what i'm trying to say so you know not a, not all the organization put this uh, as an effort to be applied so we have of course the other approach as risk based testing to be added in all that further to add uh, of course there is another method which is sometimes used as augmented uh, the use of the existing requirements is the creation of uh, usage or operational profiles a model based approach which utilizes a mix of use cases users inputs and outputs so as to accurately depict the real world use of the system now a lot of these things are being applied in the traditional approaches as well plus the agile methodology where we try to you know convert all your requirements into such a way that it turns into the modeling kind of system like unified uh, you know marking language and uh, that basically adds a lot of value here uh, to say that uh, you know or whether this requirement uh, how it's going to interact with the other parts of the application so modeling modeling option uh, will definitely add a lot of value to showcase you the control flow the data flow and many other aspects like how exactly the modules are integrated to each other and this can also be done by writing a documentation for that for example creating the use cases which shows the real real time scenario between a user and the system that how these interactions will happen and on the same time you can also create different user profiles which you also call it as personas uh, and uh, uh, try behaving that as per that particular profile and uh, try to interact with the product and see that how exactly the product is trying to behave and you can definitely you know come up with a lot of test cases as a uh, as a making use of these kind of test bases uh, this allows testing not only to be functional but also for the usability interoperability reliability security and performance you know it's just not limited to functionality of the application uh, these kind of approaches can be used very well for the other non functional testing as well because these are not limited for example if i'm talking about 500 users uh, using the application simultaneously so i'm talking about volume testing of performance and that that can be also done with help of a control flow diagram or probably creating different user profiles and see that how exactly different users behave or interact with the product at several point of time during the test analysis and planning the test team identifies the usage profiles and attempts to cover them all with the test cases the usage of profile is an estimate based on available information of realistic usage of the software this means that as the risk based testing the usage profiles may not perfectly model the eventual reality some of the test manager also apply some of methodical approaches such as checklist checklists are basically a you know a criteria based document or probably having a questionnaire which has a lot of questions to be answered when you interact with the product so we call them also as a checklist based technique where you keep your application on the one side and on the other side you have a checklist which has a lot of questions and you interact with the product and keep answering that it's just similar to when you you know put your vehicle back for servicing uh, to the service center and the service guy always comes up with a checklist uh, to your vehicle and checks up everything that whether the car is starting what's the number of kilometers uh, the indicators are working or not headlamps are working or not and you know all those features that you know when you're delivering your car to the service center what all things were working and what is not working and then again while at the delivery he confirms that everything is still working or not so these are the things which you can similarly have for your product uh, about different functionalities or different uh, document completions information as well and you can just measure that with help of the checklist which is very very helpful in product based organizations where generally the product remains the same finally another common method is used as a reactive approach where reactive approach is also one of the strategies which can be used and in the reactive approach you do not have uh, generally anything predefined you probably don't know which areas to put much more effort 
and uh, where do you have to conduct more testing in order to achieve that coverage and confidence on the product. So reactive approach says that you start testing the application and based on the outcome of testing, that is the test results, you determine where to put more uh, more effort in terms of the test cases or testing. Now, of course, that will definitely be uh, you know helping you still, but uh, probably you're not sure. Maybe you're working with a new application for the first time and you have no idea that which areas to put more effort on. So reactive will be very helpful here. And you call that approach as reactive because you react to the outcomes. If you see that a particular uh, module is giving you some of the critical defects, you do a deeper dive in that area and see that how much more we can find. So defect clustering and all those concepts can be very well applied here. So defect clustering is one of the common principles which you know from foundation. Uh, become the focus of further testing here. So prioritization and allocation are completely dynamic. The reactive approaches can work as a complement to other approaches as well. But when employed exclusively, the reactive approach tends to miss major areas of application because sometimes you do not really know that which areas you need to test more. You just follow the approach and you depend completely on the outcomes of testing. Well, that's all from this particular episode team. We wanted to cover about the techniques of the test selection other than the risk-based testing. Should you have any other questions with you, feel free to drop them below. I'm here to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.